Leave it. Leave it, RG. Leave it. Test, 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 the room. All right, what's going on, world? GTP here. Welcome back to another video. This is uh, episode number two for Project 48. Um, it's actually Tuesday right now. I think it's the, uh, it's Tuesday the 6th. Uh, yesterday, I didn't really get much, much golf practice done. I did some putting in the morning, and it's something that I usually like to do. It's either chipping or putting. And if I, when I do some putting, it's typically that, just on my mat. I just like to do like some start line, some some start line work, I'm making sure my pre-shot routine is dialed and yeah, just making sure I hit it straight or at least for the most part getting it to the hole. I will do a, another video or a more focused video on the well put mat because I, to me, I think it's better than 90% of the other mats out there just because of the versatility of it. But um, yeah, we're out for a dog with Archie. As you can see, I was um, today's podcast was about it's a sweet spot, guys. Again, definitely go check them out. But it's about managing distance control with your irons. And so it's going to be a really fun listen. But yeah, I got a cool, fun thing to talk about when I get back. I played around this past Saturday. And I shot my lowest nine my lowest nine hole score ever. It was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. So I'll talk about that when we get back to the house. And you know what? Just the one thing that's on my mind is, yeah, I was editing my first video. It should be out by now. I'll put a link up here where the poop bag is, I, I talk too much, but I have to give myself a little bit of leeway because it's the first video and I just had a lot of explaining to do. So I'll, I promise I'll make this video a little bit shorter. So, so let's just finish walking with this guy and then I'll talk to you guys at the house. So we are back from our walk. Uh, I'm gonna set up the net now. Trying to, like I said in the last video, trying to get in this morning routine of whenever, uh, whenever Alexa's in the office and the garage is freed up that we set the net up so it's so it's ready for a few morning swings and it's and it's up for the rest of the day for some later on in the day swings i really just want to see some face on uh chips again just uh referencing last video uh there's a field that i'm working on big thing rotate with your chest but um Focus on rotating your chest with your left armpit, so that's the part that turns. But this right shoulder, this right armpit, is the one that's hitting the ball. See that? Uh, I, like I said, I did play around this weekend, and uh, chipping on the back nine was actually one of my stronger parts of the game. I had a lot of chips that were close to the green that gave me good looks for par. So that was absolutely solid. I'll talk more about the round in a little bit, but first let's get this first chip in. Um, but yeah, so just like that, it was just like, um, like there was one hole, I think it was the 17. My approach shot ended up on the right. In between two bunkers, I got lucky. Uh, but ended up on the right rough of the green, uh, chipped it on, and then it landed within one putt distance, made the one putt. That shit, that, that felt so good. So this, I have to log in. So I'm just going to get 10 of these chips. I'll head back in because it is time for work. Oh, that was bad. I was watching some of my video, or when I was editing last week's video, and I was watching my chipping practice, I noticed that I would be here and then for some reason I'd come back on my come back on my lead heel or my lead leg. Make sure to keep my weight up front. Like this. Pretend that the front of the net is the green. Just trying to get it on. Just like that. Boom. Let's do a standard one. 
Now, mind you, these are chips that are on a mat. I'm getting these nice slides around the green. Woo! Let's do another short one. I used to love practicing short putts. Cool. Let's do another, uh, just a stock one. Say we're trying to just land it short of the flag, just have it roll up. Pretty good. a low one and then let's do just a stock one yep cool all right so i'm gonna actually i'm gonna log into work now perfect timing yo 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 okay so uh it's been maybe like an hour or so since the um my little morning chipping sesh um, but I kind of just uh, had some time. Um, I had some time to talk about this, this this past weekend's round. So the this is a little GTP round review. So we played at Cherry Island. It's this um, awesome course over here in Sacramento. It's in um, it's actually in Antelope, and and it's it's a I I don't want to say it's a tough. It's a short. It's not really a short course. Hold on. I have my uh, my scorecard holder. Played from the tip. The tips aren't even that far. It's um, only sixty five hundred. But we played the whites, which is a uh, six thousand, six thousand ninety-five. But it's actually a tough course just because of how it's laid out. There's, I would say, it's probably a fairly tight course. So the front is actually the widest part of the course. Um, you know, you got wide fairways. It, it's actually the more forgiving side, I would say. And in the back nine, it's actually a little bit more of a difficult side because it it tends to narrow out the the toughest of the two nines there. Uh, but on the front, um, they do have this hole, which is like a par 5 that goes straight. But half of the par 5 kind of like has water on the right side. So, you know, you got to keep it in play. And I always, I always botch it on that hole. Um, and the hole right after is a, from the tee shot, you get it down the fairway. And then it's just an immediate dog leg right over the water. Um, I had a blow up hole on that. I, th I scored a 9. It's a par 4. I scored a 9. Yeah, I, I just didn't have hopes for my swing. I, my swing felt clunky. It felt off. I just felt like since I haven't played in a while, I haven't, really, I haven't really practiced in a while, I just didn't really know what I was doing. But all of a sudden, on the back nine, things kind of like turned around. Let me show you the scorecard. Here's Cherry Island. And then so here's my front. You can see fairly long, straight. These are the two holes I was talking about. So this is that par five. And then... This is that other hole that's coming back over the water. Uh, so you can see it's pretty it's pretty far and wide. And this is the one I scored a 55 on. This one is the back. So you can kind of see a little bit more curvature to the holes, a little bit more texture, and um, a little bit narrower. Uh, but I scored a 42. Par 65. Oh, par, six, par 35. And I scored 7 over. Well, honestly, honestly, I don't know what really happened. I do know I made like a little adjustment to my swing. The swing was feeling really nice. Off the tee was a little bit iffy. Um, I really wanted to play 5 wood on a lot of these holes. Uh, you know, my approach shots. You know, I'm, I'm, I made some smart plays. I made some smart layups. Um, I recovered well. And all of a sudden, I'm getting onto the green for like par. I had a couple looks at birdie. So the par three, this par three right here, number thirteen. It was one, it was playing one twenty eight, one twenty seven, I think. Perfect pitching wedge. Landed it maybe four feet from the hole, and I landed it perfectly to where the ball, or or I had a straight putt. When it was my turn to putt, I walked up to the ball. Oh, the mic was far away the whole time. I walked up to the putt, and the putt was um, a straight putt. I walked up to it. I, I just thought about putting at my mat, and I did that. Uh, but the ball ended up lipping out, so tap in par, which I'm not mad at. I'm not mad at. Oh, the other part was actually the 10th hole, which of all the times I've played there, I've never played that hole well. I think I took uh, my hybrid, landed it just short of the, in front of the green. Although the flag is in the middle of the green, let's just bump and run it. Got it within like four, another four foot putt you know, drained it. And so I, I started off with a par, so that felt pretty good. And then next hole, I could like do like a full on round review here. I almost remember every single shot. I bought the, I use my Garmin S62, amazing watch. The S70 looks really sick. I'd love to get that at some point. But the reason I like using it is because, um, 
you know, it tracks my shots. Let's go to the hole 12. The so hole 12, this is, so this one took driver. I flooded out right about 200 yards. I ended up kind of on the other hole, um, not out of bounds. I punch shotted it back into play with my seven iron and then I laid up with my pitching wedge or I had a 75 yard shot, shanked that one. I was able to pitch it back on the green and then walked off with a two putt, sick. And then, so this was the hole that I got that I had the decent birdie look on. Um, the next hole was this dog leg par five. Bogeyed this one and I've, I've never played this one this well. In the 15th hole, um, this one has water to it. This one right here. Freaking five wood shot into the fairway. This one I think is the one where I drop kick. I drop kick the five wood and then it hit some trees that kind of like hang out on the right side. But um, and so I took eight iron, perfectly flushed eight iron. But I just um, it landed just short right of the green. And then so yeah, chipped it on, walked off with a two putt. And then so this one is a really interesting, really interesting part three I think. The way the tee box is set up, it has you looking diagonally at the hole. But you just have to know how to aim. I was playing like 156, eight iron, I drew it a little too much, ended up left of the left of the green. The green's elevated, the green's elevated. So it landed just on the hill, chipped it onto the green, right next to the hole, dropped it in, and then dropped it in for bogey. Uh, and then the 17th hole, 17th hole was a par four, bogeyed it. And then for the 18th hole, aside from that, that I had that birdie that I look on, this was probably my favorite hole. Driver didn't go well. I actually um, toe hooked this one, um, but it landed right in the fairway. And then that left me with, I, th I think it was 126 yards. And then uh, pitching wedge, flushed. It was like a sweet baby draw. Landed right on the green. Had a perfect birdie look. Well, I took the right line, just not enough speed, so it didn't. It, it, it ate the break just a little early. And it just like skirted, it, it, it touched the edge of the hole. Yeah, and so tapping par to walk off with a 42. So... Ah, so that was my round. That was my that was my best nine score ever. That's it's not the easiest course, you know. Shot seven over, so it's kind of fun just to see the just to see the potential that I have right now. And again, I made I made a uh, swing change that a change, but it was some it's something that I've been working on. It really showed up on the course. So seven over, shot forty two. God, can you imagine if I did a if I shot another 42 on the front, I think it's, I mean, like an 84 there. It's not. So, yeah, pretty excited. It's still like on high. So, as far as everything else goes, I, I hit three. I had three fairways out of that one. There were, um, as far as greens and regs go, I hit two, which, you know, I'm not expecting to get that, you know, get a high number there. But two is pretty good for me. Especially, I think I had about 33. I had 34 putts the entire round. So, which is solid for me. Yeah. So, okay, so that was my round review there. Uh, but yeah, so that was my round at Cherry Creek. Shot seven over on the back. Oh, I broke 100 there. So I shot a 97. Stoked on that. Anyways, got to get back to work. My coffee's getting cold. Fuck, so good. All right, what's going on? It's uh, practically almost four. I have not filmed anything since that chipping session. Got busy with work, and then I got off like around one o'clock, actually. My brother actually helped me put up the TV. But um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I kind of want to go outside and swing. But yeah, let's go take some swings. So um, I kind of just wanted to take some swings. My trusty old seven here. One of the things that I started doing on the back nine that allowed me to kind of swing kind of nice, what I do is I I'll hold this up like this, the club, and then I'll have my elbows, you know, like you're supposed to like, like poor that golf says, like giving blood. And then if you look at the Ben Hogan like, book, he talks about this, he talks about the elbows being inside. So that's what I, that's what I kind of did on the back nine was, so keeping the elbows in front of me, or at least feeling like it, allowed me to really get that feel of getting the ball or getting, getting my trail arm through and not stuck. Like that one felt money. I think this was from that first ball. Nope. Elbows in front. Right, let's get one more, one more good one. It just looks so in front of me. That's crazy. Okay, that one felt good. But, yep, catch you guys in a bit.
going on guys? Just got back from our morning walk. We went on about a mile and a half. No, almost 1.3 miles. It's almost eight o'clock, so I'm just gonna set up the net real quick, log into work when I make my coffee shortly after signing in. I wasn't even recording. Silly old me. Cool. All right, so uh, gotta log in. Yep. All right, so just a um, a little update. I actually finished editing the first video. Pro yeah, Project Forty Eight, Episode One. There it is. Exporting. Whoa. Yeah, no focus. I'm probably gonna upload this to YouTube tonight, and yeah, so I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Hopefully, like around lunchtime, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go swing it. All right, later. I just wanted to share with you guys um, that the first Project 48 video is live. Yo, check it. Cool. Actually, pretty cool that it's um, up live now. I think I like the idea of Wednesday uploads just because it allows me some time to edit. And it's middle of the week, so, you know, a lot of people are going through the hump day vibes. And, yeah, so definitely check it out. Comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And all that fun, good YouTube stuff. But um, it's about 12:20 right now. I have, I'm gonna go ahead and just go to the garage and swing a little. I kind of want to work on my um, wedge swings. I want to do like a little rib to rib practice. So I'll see you guys out there. We'll just do it with the lob wedge. Damn, it is chilly in here. Okay, so like I said, I want to work on uh, my rib to rib wedge swing. So here, this rib. It's kind of it's it's very similar to my hip to hip. This one just goes a little bit further. Hands go up to the ribs. To the this is all about my wedges for me are distance control. It's not about hitting it far. It's not about hitting it high. It's about almost kind of being as accurate as I can be to get onto the green. So like if I pull out a wedge, I'm expecting to get on the green. Pretty good. Let me just get a couple more. Ooh, that was thin. Oh, that was fat. That one's pretty good. <laughs> That's the ball. All right, so um, probably just gonna do a little bit more of this. And then I'm gonna head on in. It's about 4.30 now, guys. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do now is go outside for a few swings. And then, um, yeah, I gotta put the net away. Um, so I was using my uh, my lob wedge earlier to do some, um, to do some rib to ribbers. Let's mess around with the, with the gap wedge. This is probably the only wedge that I full swing. This is probably my 100, 105 to 115 club. That being said, even though I do full swings with this, I still use this as, I still do my wedge swings with this one. If I just need to, something to fly a little lower, roll a whole lot more, um, I'll do my wedge swings with this guy. But Let's do another hip to hipper. Right? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? That was perfect. Let's just do a rib to ribber. That should be it. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this and then I gotta put this away really quick because Alexa should be home soon. Then tomorrow it is. <laughs>
just came back from our walk. Give you the deets. We walked almost a mile. 0.94. It is waste management open. And so this is going to be fun to watch. Uh, um, Going to log on to work, make my coffee, set up the net, and then... head back in make my coffee and then um get back to work and some waste management oh guys all right so today's actually been quite a busy day it's already 2 30 i haven't been able to go out to swing or even putt i'm a, i, I kind of want to swing i'm getting kind of burnt out on work right now but um i'm gonna finish i'm gonna still trying to research this report and then maybe i'll step out for a minute but all right it's so it's been about an hour since that last clip i'm kind of like burnt out from looking at spreadsheets and stuff so um i don't know what i'm gonna do yet but i just want to swing so let's go to the focus dog i want to chip and then i want to uh i want to swing i think i want to swing like eight iron or something but I feel pretty, pretty, pretty gay. That was it. Sand wedge. Let's, uh, I'll pull out an iron. We'll see what it is. Okay, here we go. Just gonna stick true to what's been working for me. Arms in front. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. I felt like toe. Might be like low heelish. That one felt smacked actually. Ah, that was fat. Didn't even shift my weight. Oh, that's what we're afraid of. I felt decent. Okay, that one felt moneyer. Oh, I spun out. I could. Uh. That one felt good. Oh yeah. Okay, I think that one will be all right. So yeah, I'm gonna finish the rest of the work day. And then hopefully get out for some more swings um, after or before I got to put the net away. So, all right. So it's the end of the work day. Um, I just got the text message from the better half that she is on her way home. So I need to get the golf net put away, but I want to get some swings first. I was watching my swings from earlier. Um, I realized I wasn't letting the club head drop behind me. Like I'm here. And it really was just coming down. If I come here, feel the club head drop behind me, then that's more into out, so. Nope. Okay. Yeah, that one felt all right. I think that'll be it for the night because we're going out to dinner. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah. All right, what's going on, guys? And we're finally getting around to doing some, some putting. We'll do some putting drills for you guys. So one of the things I like about this mat, this well put mat, is that when you're putting this way in this direction, it's all about, you can focus on speed control. This is why I love this mat, it's one of the more versatile 
putting message you could use. And you can use these little zones, these black zones, or these green zones to put to. And um, it just helps you dial in your speed. So um, for this one, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna try and get to the black zones. There's four of them. I don't think you can see the, the very last one. It's at the end of the mat. It is, uh, it's, it's Saturday the 10th now, so I think, or this is gonna be the last clip for this week. Uh, I only wanted to get on because last night while I was putting, I was realizing, uh, and it's kind of some, been something that I've noticed while I've been putting here, and I always thought it was the floor or something, like being uneven, but it's actually how I'm holding, how I'm resting the putter at a dress. All right, so, so I noticed that whenever I would lay the club down, oh yeah, that's better. So I noticed that when when I would put, I would always kind of have this like roll to it, almost kind of like a draw spin, right? And I, I I didn't think that it was because of my stroke. I didn't think it was ball position or pretty much anything else at a dress. Like what else could make a ball roll left? I realized that, and I realized I was holding it more toe or more toe down, and then at impact, it would go left. I don't know if you can tell, but I have the toe down, and this is how I was holding it. I thought it was flat, so let me do a putt. See, and it would just start left. And so I was holding it like this, and I was like, let me mess with, let me try and get it as flat as possible. And so I started messing with that yesterday, and it's a little bit more of a straighter putt. Look at that. A little bit more of a straighter putt. And that was the issue with my putts. It was, it was as simple as checking what I was doing at a dress. See, if you can see, it just it was just a matter of um, how it was being held at a dress. All right, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. That's gonna do it for this video. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do more putting. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please stay tuned for the journey. If this is your first time, I yeah, I focus on just sharing my journey and getting good at golf and anything that might help me, I share just in case it helps you. But if it doesn't, that's all good. Uh, like I said, comment neutral if you made it this far. Yeah, look out for the next video. Hope you guys have a good one. And as always, get 1% better every single day, baby. Let's go.